29RDB Cougar here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, which obviously stands for Robert David Bobbert. Um, this is a very popular bunkhouse. We blew through our supply of these very quickly this year, and I'm finally, I'm glad we finally got one back in here with a couple of the more recent updates. Uh, so we've got double over double bunks in the back with a privacy sliding wall, door, whatever you want to call it. So it's got sleeping for four in the back, but it's also privatized, but it also feels nice and big in the living area during the day. That's what's kind of cool about this one. It combines a lot of things into something that's uh, a little more manageable in size and budget as compared to some of these big, you know, triple quadruple slide bunkhouse models. What's so cool about this one, I think, one of the reasons it really, you know, shined through and gained a lot of popularity, I think is the fact that it has a good entertainment setup which is something you can't say of all bunkhouses. Like if you notice, you've got that sofa right across from this huge 4K uh, HD TV right here. And the TV can obviously swing out on its double jointed swing arm to face all the super slide seating. So on a rainy day, you've actually got, you know, an enjoyable place to spend your time. Plus you've got the private really room of the bunk in the back that the, you know, the kids can, or the guest, whatever it may be, can retreat to. Well, maybe mom and dad, the, the folks who own the coach, you kind of get to roam the whole house here, which is sort of nice. Another thing this does very well, well, you know, let's take a look at this. So, like I said, the privacy wall there slides closed or a door or whatever you want to call it to close that off. But you can see that we also have a tri-fold sleeper sofa high to bed, as well as the little bench here that can fold down uh, for your, your dinette can fold into bonus sleeping. What's also neat is if you start by looking under that high to bed right there, you'll find bonus storage under uh, both the high to bed as well as the dinette seating over here. So, you know, you've got a lot more cargo space than you might realize, but it all kind of tucks away and it's there when you need it and gone when you don't and it gives you this nice big looking living room. I had some kind of rough light coming in through the window, so I kind of pulled the shades down as little as I could, which meant almost all the way in, in, in the cases here. But what's nice is all of the windows open for ventilation, even these extra large slide side windows right here. This thing gets some awesome airflow and breeze. Now, right next to the dinette here, all of your slide lighting is just on one switch, so you don't have to go through and click all these on and off. And you can see they were pretty generous at how much lighting they were putting in here. The other neat little update is that these are now dimmer switched. So at night, when you've got your main cabin lights off and maybe you're just trying to watch a movie, or if you need like something like a night light for the kiddos, well, you can you know just kind of leave it down like that. And what's neat is it'll actually remember the position that you left it at. And then if you hold it again, wow, here she comes right back to life. So it's got as much or as little light as you need for evening viewing. Um, over here in your pantrytainment center, as I like to call it, you can see that there is just huge storage above that thing. And the TV actually functions as a door for the middle pantry, which is exceptionally deep. It's as deep as the refrigerator is deep, except it's wider, with more storage space down below. They just didn't waste anything here to really maximize your total space uh, in you know, dry storage capacity. And that's another thing. It's once again, everything kind of closes up and folds away to a nice, really seamless, clean look but there's so much more than meets the eye behind this one. And it's everything in this RV really does two things. It's, it's both aesthetic and functional all at the same time. It's a really efficient use of space. Now, one of the more recent updates in uh, this model year here is the switch over to in command on these. And this isn't extra, this is just standard. But whatever you can do on this pad right here, you can actually do off your phone as well. Let's see if the, yep, the default code's there. Okay, so what's cool about this is this replaces that master control panel with the buttons and switches that we always used to have. And it's a little more specific on a per trailer basis. Now what's cool is anything you can do off that pad you can do on your phone. And what's neat about that is not just operating like the lights or the water pump or the slides from here or the awning, but you can actually control your heating and cooling from here. If you look, you see that little HVAC option. So wherever your phone is, you are uh, within reach of adjusting your thermostat, basically. And where that's really handy is like if you're laying in bed at night and you wake up and it's a little warmer than you predicted, well, you can crank the air up a little bit right from bed or you can turn it down or whatever, whatever works for you. Um, you can also like stand outside and you can watch that slide open without crushing anything. Or, cause like standing right here, I can't see the bedroom slide closed. What if you accidentally forgot to leave a, uh, the bedroom closet slide door open? Well, with the in-command system, I can walk around the corner and I can 
physically line of sight and go, oh crap, I left that door open. I don't want it to go down the road like that. I can stand here and look at it and make sure that cabinet door is not going to be broken as a result. I actually didn't plan on leaving doors open like this. It just turned into the perfect example. I might have to start doing that more often. So this is also going to function as your main light switch here. But like if you're sitting over there by the sofa, you don't want to have to get up, walk over here, hit the button, turn on the pad, hit the button to turn off the light. You don't want to have to do all that. Well, <laughs> those genius people at Cougar, they thought of that too. Because right over here is an additional little main cabin light rocker switch. And you'll have another one of these in the bedroom is what's cool. So if you're sitting on the sofa or if it's time to, for the kids to turn off everything at night, you just kind of yell down from the bedroom or whatever, well, bang, they can just hit the button, pew, go to bed. That's all it takes right there. Now you can see uh, we've got TV hookups back here in the bunkhouse, bunk room, whatever you want to call it across from the bunks if you choose to add a TV for the kiddos. And they do have a nice chunk of storage dedicated to themselves so that you don't have to, uh, you know, have their stuff creeping in through the living room area. Now this is elevated. They uh, Different brands have handled this floor plan differently. Like open range, this is all at ground level and you walk in and it has a bigger closet. Cougar opted to give you a clo one closet inside and then a huge extra storage bay in the back under this bunk. So different brands have handled it differently. Jayco handled it differently still, but you still have the commonality of these double over double bunks back here, um, giving you, you know, the extra uh, sleeping space that you want. And each bunk has its own nice little window for airflow and its own little light switch that you can uh, flip there. So um, let me back up a step over here. You can see my coat hanging on the little coat rack right by the entry door doing its job bothers me how many fifth wheels don't have a place to hang coats by the door. These guys are very good about it, though. So we already kind of saw the sleeper seating. I just want to give you a quick pass through this direction before we zero in on the kitchen. I do also want to point out the fact that these standard have a 15,000 BTU central air. Standard, they're wired for a second AC in the bedroom if you choose to option that on. Um, check the, the one that we have in stock. may look like this. It might not. Always verify the RV that we have in stock because it could be different from this video. And they're using floor ducted heating here because it's the most effective efficient method of heating an RV. You can get rid of the floor vents, but you will lose some airflow doing so. Both methods are good in different ways. This is the way the Cougar is opted for. Now, uh, over here in the kitchen, we're going to start with our eight cubic foot refrigerator freezer. And it was kind of an accident, but there's a real kind of uh, a handoff from outside to inside here. This sort of like uh, quilted uh, metallic uh, insert that they have here on the refrigerator doors, it's actually the same stuff as they have for the skirting on the outside of the camper. So there's a visual connection between inside and outside. The decors really work together. But uh, over here in the kitchen, starting up top, we've got big cabinet storage up top. And I like the fact that it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. So if you want to throw some decorative stuff up top, you can. Now our countertops are a material called thermal foil. They are a sealed edge pressed membrane. Uh, basically, if you happen to splash water on that sink, it won't water damage anything. You may have noticed we had a big space down here below the sink for a wastebasket. Plenty of good drawers. And someone's going to ask, why didn't they put a drawer up top there? And if you pay attention, if you open, if you put a drawer up top right under the overhang of the countertop, it would actually collide with the sink. So they would have to give you either a crappy tiny sink or just shift the drawers down. I'd rather they just shift the drawers down because you still have drawers and there are also the bigger drawers on the back side of the kitchen countertop that we already saw. There are two sink covers. I just simply have one stowed away so you can get a good look at how deep this stainless steel sink is here. High rise sprayer faucet, recessed stove top, and a bigger oven giving you more you know, capacity to do more things with and for your family, even if it's just prep space, even if you just use that as a bread box, it's a bigger one. Um, and a bigger window here in the kitchen. Because one, it gives you airflow, and two, it lets you keep an eye on the kiddos under the awning. If you start hearing someone going, ow, well, you kind of want to see what's going on, don't you? Moving upstairs. They uh, really standardize their bathrooms in these, and this is very similar to the bathrooms you'd find in the Big Brother Cougar, with this being the, the smaller member of the Cougar family. Or even Montana bathrooms are eerily similar to this. Keystone's found the bathroom that most people seem to look for, and they have really capitalized on it. Now, we do have a porcelain foot flush stool there, and we've got all sorts of leg room. And this is one of those doors that just kind of, I call it, melts in your mouth, not in your hand. The reason I like this, did you notice how I didn't have to take steps backwards when I went uh, up to upstairs to the bathroom? The door moves out of the way, and then when you move into the bathroom, the door once again moves out of the way. So everything is, well, <laughs> out of the way. Plenty of linen storage here. Uh, it is tall, 
kind of thin. But you know what? It's not terrible and it leaves you lots of room to stack lots of like big beach towels and stuff like that. Now you may notice that we have an easy walk-in shower without any sort of big step up. And no step up is something we're going to talk about in the bedroom because that's another improvement on these compared to previous years. More of that sealed edge thermal foil counters with an extra large sink. And we also have that seating area in the closet, or pff, oh my gosh, in the shower so that you can sit down for, uh, you know, easy bathing and a monstrously sized uh, medicine cabinet in here. They've done well with this. Now, the since there's no step up, in the shower, it's the same height as I am right here, standing here with my shoes and my hat on. Plenty of room. Yesterday I wore my contacts. Everybody said I looked weird. You're not wrong. I do look weird without them. This, I, I prefer that. Anyway, uh, nobody prefers looking at me, but if you're going to, you prefer to do it with glasses and a hat. <laughs> Three inch interior walls that are fully framed out. You can walk in and, and this isn't just Cougar. This is really Keystone in general. Grab these walls and start trying to wiggle them. They don't. And I think that's where a lot of the structural reliability this comes from. It's not just a good shell, but also kind of like in a house, you call it like a load bearing wall, extra structural support inside, not just uh, like door framing, but like actual studded framing, you know? Um, now, they redesigned the pass-through storage on their uh, Cougar half ton fifth wheels. And what they created is they got rid of that like nine inch step up. Now we've got like a two and a half inch little bump here. I don't think this is enough to get anyone's blood pressure worked up over it. Now I have personally tripped over that big nine inch hump on like a used RV that came in. I don't think this thing right here is gonna be an issue. They increased the storage capacity of the pass-through and they also reduced the step up height around the bed here. This to me is an absolute home run and there's so many other brands that still haven't figured this out. Uh, 80 inch queen bed with some big, easy, wide open side stands there. But look at the hanging closets that are, well, these actually aren't hanging closets. These are general storage cabinets on each side of the bed. But notice how they have a nice little radius bend on the end here. So you don't have that sharp spear point jabbing you in the shoulder every time you roll over. Once again, if you want to add a second air, it's possible the one we have in stock has it. This one that we're looking at right now does not, but it is ready for a second air, and we can throw those on for you. They put an extra large window here in the bedroom. Apparently, I forgot to draw that shade up. My fault. Sorry about that. But it gives you lots of light, and as we swing over here, you can see that those wardrobe closets are fully mirrored to reflect that light around and give the, uh, the bedroom a larger, more open feel. Now, starting with that uh, closet up here, again, I keep calling it a closet, more of just a cabinet, your closet space actually comes within the slide out over here. But what's awesome is they revised this a little bit and they added triple dresser drawers down inside of there. It really didn't cost much of anything to upgrade that, but the extra storage that it gives you is absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, kind of like next to the bunkhouse, there's that one little switch. So you do have a dedicated bedroom light switch right here. And in case you're wondering what these are, these are thermostat sensors. You have a sensor for the living room and a sensor for the bedroom so that if either zone falls out of the appropriate temperature range, it'll kick the air or the heat on, whatever it needs, instead of only being localized to just the bedroom or the living room. It, it's kind of a, an and instead of an or, if you will. And if you do feel like throwing a TV in the bedroom, they are all set to do so. Now, one of the questions I get all the time is, is this really half ton towable? And the answer is, that depends. A properly equipped, heavy half ton with a good payload package? Probably. I would feel better if something like this were on a three-quarter ton truck, though. Cougar Half Ton is the name, not necessarily the designation. It gives you an idea. So that, that's something I do like to clear up on these. Uh, the, uh, there's, there's some very heavy-duty half tons out there that can handle something like this, but that's typically not the half ton pickup you're going to find at the dealership on a given day. And there's more to towing than just the dry weight. If you need to know if your vehicle can handle any RV, you give us a call as long as it, I mean, if, if there's an RV that we might have for you, but you want to make sure it's right, give us a call and we'll make sure you're safe there. Now, I talked kind of like the, uh, the thicker interior walls. I mentioned how this does have a lot of uh, good structural integrity and the records there are fantastic, which is probably why Keystone has the industry's most comprehensive structural warranty. There's a lot of these three-year structure warranties out there. They're not all created equal. Keystones covers more things, basically. It's And it's in just simple English that you can read. We'll send you the PDF if you want to. So here's that redesigned uh, basement area. This is so much bigger than it used to be. And it used to be fine. It's just even better now, I think. Now, over here, a couple things. 
we are looking at motion sensitive lighting right here. Uh, and you've got some of these inside too, but you can have this in on mode, off mode, or motion mode. I just have no battery power run to the unit currently. I, sh I shut that off when I'm outside. And uh, it's nice when you open the door, it'll light right up when you need it. When you close the door, kind of like a refrigerator, it'll shut itself off. At least we assume so. I've never actually shoved a camera in a fridge and shut the door. Uh, outside TV hookups. And then you've got this thing. This is the brain, the heart, the soul of the Cougar. This is in command. Now, it's doing a couple different things for us. And there are different versions of in-command, like the Fusions and the Legacy Series Montanas have like a little jazzed up version of it, but the function's effectively the same. First of all, Keystone is the first towable manufacturer to fully color code all their wiring. And it comes into one centralized location within command. First of all, anything that we've had within command, we haven't had wiring problems with. Secondly, if we did, it'd be so much easier to diagnose and work on. Doing uh, tech work, diagnosis work on electrical is hard. Electrical is tricky. It's like a process of elimination, not, not finding the problem, but finding what the problem isn't and narrowing it down. This makes, it just cuts that curve so much. So you've got that touch screen inside and you can sync it to your phone, but what if for some reason that pad goes haywire? Maybe one of the kids headbutts it. I don't know why, but it may be an accident. They break it. Well, if you notice right here, you still have something where you can select things like your awning, your slide motors, and open them and close them. You still have that manual, physical switch to override things. Plus, the slides and the awnings all have their own manual, no power overrides. Now, we don't see little fuses in this thing like you see in most RVs. You see these bigger guys. And those you can get at like any sort of automotive parts store. And there are so many more automotive parts places than RV parts places. It's not even funny. They can handle more current, basically. They're going to, uh, it, it's really hard to pop those. Unlike uh, a little like 15 amp or 30 amp fuse can sometimes pop, especially in the cold. Those things aren't going to. So uh, we've got a easy tilt power awning. You can literally just grab it with two fingers and crank it right down. The similarities in the exterior appearance between Little Brother Cougar Half Ton and Big Brother Full Blood Cougar are incredible. If you didn't notice the fact that it said half ton, if you didn't notice the fact that this had a closet slide out instead of a full bed slide out, you really can't tell the two apart. They are more similar in that way than they're not. They have such a good look. And in this class and category, there are so many brands who aren't willing to go to the extent of using like the nicer raised bubble letters to give it that, that bang, that look that aren't willing to do the full automotive paint job that they're doing on here, which is covered under their three-year structure warranty, by the way, because Keystone owns their own paint shop. Maybe you've heard of Newmar Diesel Pushers? Well, Keystone bought their paint shop years ago, and Keystone does their own paint work, so they can control the quality, the cost of it, and now there's accountability. Instead of people pointing fingers at one another, they say, you know what, we did the work, we'll cover it. We've yet to have any paint problems from Keystone, ever, in years. Um, We've got power front leveling. We have power rear stabilizer jacks on these, which is pretty common for this class. I'm not going to spend a lot of time writing home about that. Uh, they have improved uh, like the whole docking station here compared to previous generations as well. They used to have this tiny little, almost the size of the water heater here, just this tiny little box to maybe hook up a little bit of cable and stuff like that. Now they've got a full big fifth wheel docking center, but they could do this now because when they revised the basement, this became possible. Now, you notice how these are inside the RV and they're enclosed, they're protected, they're in a heated cavity, kind of like you have a heated forced air enclosed underbelly here to help give you some extra protection. Now, there are more cougar clones and copycats and, quote, cougar killers out there than any other RV. This is one of the most highly copied RVs out there. And a lot of them, are they can be very fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with them. But there's a difference between the original and a photocopy, and a lot of that can be found right here around the slide-out. These are the extra things Keystone does. So... We start with this rough textured skin right here because it really grabs the slide seal. And if you notice, it's actually, I don't know if you can even see in there, but it's actually a double wipe seal with an additional interior seal. Whenever the slides are all the way in or out, there's always three points of slide seal contact so the water doesn't get in. God forbid somehow it did. Or like, what if it's raining and you're running the slide in? There's actually a uh, interior sea channel, like a rain gutter basically, that runs vertically to shunt water away so it doesn't get into the coach. Now, water runs down the slide wall, and most brands it will actually wick under and potentially attack the subfloor. The simplest thing separates Keystone slides from almost, I've never seen another brand that does this, and it shocks me that more brands don't. Take any sort of fingernail or something and run it right under here, and you're going to feel a vertical groove. 
And that is because water without assistance can't go vertically. It can't go up. It can only go down and sometimes a little bit sideways as it pools around. Well, uh, th when this water hits here, it will bead and drip and it won't wick into your subfloor. And you see when you're running down the road, you also have a fully under sealed slide out, which is something those old Fleetwood fifth wheels never did. And that's why a lot of Fleetwood fifth wheels, you'd find soft floors around the slide outs, but the slide seals on the sides and the top were never a problem because they never sealed the bottom of it. And when you're going down the road and water spraying off the tires under that slide out, it would walk its way right inside the RV. Won't happen here, doesn't happen here. Back here, you've got this 225 pound rated fold down cargo deck bike rack spare tire holder if it needed to be, which it doesn't need to because the spare tire store is somewhere else, but you get the idea. It does stuff. It's a stuff thing. It does stuff. And you also have this extra large rear cargo bay back here. So if you're looking for all of the stuff for the kids, I think this little thing they have going on back here gives you room to keep like the the lawn games the totes all of the outside stuff in a logical outside area away from the rest of the stuff it there's just a lot of benefits that you uh, you can always find something new with countertops or storage space if you don't have countertops and storage you can run into a problem you ain't gonna have any of that going on here um, LED tail and marker lights. That's another thing that kind of surprised me. How many even bigger brother fifth wheels to this still don't have LED marker lights, only LED tail lights. Now we've got the, uh, the nicer uh, grill out here, the capital grill thing. Man, a lot of folks, one of the most common requests that we get at Halet RV is someone has a little bit older fifth wheel with a little two burner stove top and they say, can we swap that out and get this? And you can, but you got to kind of remanufacture some things because this is actually physically bigger than those old little two burner stovetops used to be. But notice too, they mounted it. The part that comes out here, the part that's more susceptible to like drizzly, rainy, anything. It is a galvanized rolled steel. So it's a more rugged, robust material to last longer. And this is a real grill, not just a cooktop. You can actually do some grilling on that. Over here, we've got my favorite, Dad's Medicine Cabinet. And what does she keep? Say it with me. Bottled water and barley pop. That's right. Um, the uh, baggage doors, by the way, they're all magnetic. And if you notice, they're also all fully sealed on the hinges so that water can't get in here, freeze, expand, and spring and break those hinges. Not going to happen here. Now, you do have a little cold water sprayer port somewhere else around here, usually in that little um, uh, basement um, docking station. Whew, smoke coming out of my ears. Anyway. But over here on the campsite, you have this little outside utility shower. It can kind of do the job as a sink for the outside kitchen if you have a little wash basin right here. But it's also really nice if the kids have been in the lake, you can hose them off before they go inside to the RV and get the turtle slime smell through the entire coach. Uh, let's see, we've got the nicer aluminum plank steps here that are uh, a little bit better than the steel ones. They're stronger, they have less flex. You've got a Moride shock dampening uh, suspension system. Moride or, no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, this is using the LCI road armor system, which is almost the same thing. Um, what else am I missing? Friction hinge entry door, very long awning. Look at the real estate on this awning here. This thing is awesome. There's a reason we blew through these last year, and I kind of suspect we're going to go through them a little faster this year even still. So, give us a call. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Happy camping, everyone. And remember that Halo RV, we only do everything, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything between. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy camping, everyone.